Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Victor. You know, the question is how to laser better in 2016. I think uh, the answer would be quite easy. You know, it's like we, we are used to do in the last years. And if you ask me in the next uh, 10 years, probably it will be the same. Laser is still uh, useful. And I will try to see, to show you when is actually uh, what we have the possibility to do and uh, when uh, uh, it's actually very useful. This is my disclosure. And of course, we have a, a series of uh, possibility of laser. When we speak laser, is not just one wavelength. We have many possibilities. And of course, each one has one advantage to the other. You have a 532, you have uh, the yellow, that it's a different type of yellow, by the way. But the, the pure, pure yellow is 577. Then we have a 660 the infrared, the 10, and so on. I think the, probably the most interesting right now is the yellow one. And uh, I will try to show you, uh, you know, to repeat something that was uh, said by uh, Victor, but, uh, you know, uh, diabetic retinopathy, of course, you can use yellow as you were using the other laser uh, for, uh, uh, you know, the palm retina photocoagulation and for the macular grid. Of course, you can actually use also in a substratial way. I will not spend t some time on that because uh, 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 there will be uh, another speaker that will speak about that. Then you can actually use for uh, laser as a, you know, for a lesion, a peripheral lesion, and you can do a barrage with a, uh, with a, a yellow laser. And just to show you, you know, the effect that you can create with a mottling pigment is what you want just uh, with uh, like a, a green or a yellow. And uh, what about choroidal vascularization? Well, we are in the era of, uh, uh, you know, anti-VGF and uh, who want to do a laser treatment on, uh, uh, you know, choroidal vascularization? I think there is still, a, you know, a, a room for, for laser. In particular, sometimes of, uh, uh, subtype of uh, coronal vascularization, for example, a polypoidal lesion. You know from the study, from uh, the Everest study one, and we will, we will hear uh, quite soon uh, with the Everest study two, that you know the anti-VGF alone is not working so well to close the polyps. And the polyps is actually what you actually have to close because otherwise, uh, you know, the, the leakage will come always from, from that point, from that uh, dilation. So you can actually do a focal laser treatment. Of course, you can change, you know, you, we are used to do laser for uh, the MPS, uh, like an MPS study, you know, with uh, whitening the retina. Now, particularly if you focusing on uh, the bulge, you can actually obtain a, a change in color without whitening the retina. So creating less damage. That is not a subtraction. It's, uh, uh, it's just, uh, you know, changing the, uh, the, the treatment so, as I told you, that is uh, the results of uh, um, Everest 1 that was only on a 60 patient and was the first study that was actually looking at the closure of the polyps more than uh, visual acuity as a first endpoint. And uh, to close the, the, the polyps, uh, you know, the PDT or, uh, and uh, Lucentis and PDT was a uh, actually more effective than one uh, that only uh, Lucentis. And I, again, it's uh, the phase two with a larger number, with a one-year follow-up, it will be even more impressive. So if the polyps is not under the fovea, why don't we do laser? So this is just an example of uh, you know, a polypoidal lesion with a bulge over here. And you see that uh, if we are uh, treating gently, just, you know, uh, not whitening the retina, you can close the polyp. And what I think is uh, most interesting is looking at the autofluorescence. You know that the autofluorescence usually show if you have, uh, you know, a damage of the RPE, uh, you actually a, a dark spot. So the, the treatment was performed here, and you see that almost the, there is no change at the level of RPE. So you can be gentle, but in the meantime, you can close your polyps. And uh, you are not actually uh, have to b close all the branching network, but just the polyp could be enough a thick 
<coughs> sufficient to, 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 to control religion. Another case, just to show uh, before and after, you see just treating the polyps, you can actually close uh, and reduce the, the leakage. What is quite interesting is that, uh, you know, this is the picture before the treatment and this after the treatment. You see that there is no whitening of the retina and you actually be uh, able to close anyway your uh, polyps. So another case where you actually see the ICG and the OCTs and uh, after the treatment you actually see the, the results. No big damage on the retina, so you can actually be quite close to the fovea, but uh, just using laser, nothing more than that. Another case, you know, the polyps over there, and you see the treatment, and after the treatment, the solution, the, you know, the, all the fluid is uh, resolved, and, uh, and you also, almost you don't see the damage, any damage at the level of the retina. You see the OCT before and after. And the color picture just showing, you know, if you have a damage or not. That is quite, quite very, um, you know, uh, gentle. Now, the other th thing is that you can actually have uh, a feeder vessel treatment in case uh, you have, uh, you know, a choroidal uh, uh, neovascularization, a polypoidal type lesion. So first of all, I, I will run the uh, uh, fluorescent and ICG, and you see the polyps, it's here. Now, the, the big difficult of the feeder vessel is to identify the feeder vessel. So I will run again and uh, try to see if you are able to, to guess where I did the treatment then. So the lesion is here. So you see the... Uh, mid phase where the polyps it's uh, it's filled, and here the late phase, the typical washout of the polyps, and you see here this is the vein, and in fact the treatment was performed exactly here, and you see treating very far from the center of the macula, you see that the polyps completely close. And I can tell you that, uh, you know, because of the slow flow of this type of lesion, it's quite easy to close and maintain the closure of, uh, of the polyps. Of course, again, you have to have some skill and you have to be used to detect the feeder vessel. But otherwise, it's uh, very, very easy to perform. And so here you see the vessel that is closed after the, the treatment, not filled anymore. What about, uh, you know, if you have retinal microaneurysm, say like, like, for example, in a Coats disease, and you probably have the same experience that I have. If you use the anti-VGF, it doesn't work. You know, you have fluid and it doesn't disappear. And here you see the typical uh, also peripheral changes. And this was a patient that was treated with uh, a big number of uh, um, Avastin, but uh, you didn't see any big results. And so we started to do, you know, uh, the treatment. And you see that was uh, in June 2010 and June 2011. And what we did was did the yellow treatment, only yellow laser, treating all the uh, microaneurysm, or most of them. And this was uh, June 2011, October 2011, March 2012. I would never expect such a result. Uh, with an anti-VGF in a coast disease. And in fact, we did just focal, focal laser. And you see the visual acuity in particular improved, but I actually I was quite amazed. And another case, you see the hard exudates. Here you see all the dilated uh, vessels and um, leaking. The ICG is showing the same things. And... Uh, Peripheral changes, as I expected. This is before, and this is after. You see, before and after, just performing laser in bad points. One treatment, this patient, um, sorry, uh, it's 2012, we actually recently see, and uh, no activation anymore. So the, 
The good thing is that if you use yellow, most of, you know, all the energy is absorbed by, most of the energy is absorbed by uh, blood. So you can focus on uh, microaneurysm. And uh, for example, the difference between the yellow and green, green is actually absorbing, absor you know, the energy is absorbed by your RP and then goes back and goes back and close your microaneurysm. When you use yellow, you actually focusing on the blood, so you actually uh, has less uh, energy that goes to the RPE and you don't need to, you know, hit the, uh, the RPE to have, uh, you know, the effect on the, your macroaneurysm. So in some way, if you want to combine the anti-VGF to reduce the edema and the laser, if you use green, of course, you rather prefer to do before the injection, reducing the, you know, the thickness of the retina, and then you can put less energy on your RPE to have the effect of a microaneurysm. When you have a yellow, it's actually better to do in, in, uh, the, the treatment first because you are far from the uh, RPE and the photoreceptor, so the damage can be less. So instead of you know, absorbing the fluid and then do the treatment, do the opposite. You, you're actually better to do the uh, treatment of the microaneurysm, and then if you want to have a faster resolution of the fluid, then you do the, your injection. So I'm still using the laser. I think uh, it's, uh, I, you know, 2005, I start to train my, my son quite uh, uh, early with laser, and I'm still doing with him, but in particular with all my residents. Thank you.